my technology festival that I founded last year is on again. So check it out. We have big, big names lined up as well, which I'm really proud of. So EU president Ursula von der Leyen, Google CEO, il mio festival qua questa settimana. Faccio un evento enorme. Ma si può, si può, si può. Was darf ich sagen? Wirklich, ich begrüße so, äh, die, Welt. die Welt. Alle Zuschauer. Und wir, gehen wir gehen live rein in die Welt. Komplett in deren Geschichte CO2-neutral geworden ab jetzt. Also eine wirkliche Sensation, ganz groß. Everything totally under control or half half? Everything is under control. So German everything engineering. And so Nico everything Rosberg is on the home stretch it's as his team prepares for the 2020 Green Tech Festival. You've got to have a really fast brain, and his brain works like it did when he was racing. It's so impressive. He really does inject a lot of pace to proceedings. The business world is slow, and the business world doesn't make decisions. The business world doesn't execute. You know, it's blah, 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 all day long. And in F1, if you do blah, 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 you are, you're gone. You will not win. You need to be discuss, decide, execute, go, next one. And uh, this is something that I'm bringing to the business world. The former master of the track has found a new goal to pursue. Development went out of control in Los Angeles. We go green in Berlin. So, come on in. Green Tech is a different kind of festival focused on sustainability. It was founded by Nico Rosberg, who has made the environment his new mission in life since retiring from motorsports. Rev had exclusive access as we accompanied him during this year's three-day exhibition in Berlin. On the first morning, the former Formula One driver felt an excitement not unlike being back on the grid again. It was so intense waking up in the morning, the adrenaline. And I was thinking about exactly that this morning um, when I was having my breakfast. And there were some similar sensations. Of course I'm nervous, yeah, because it's a, it's a big, big thing. And, and the strange thing in the event business is you're working for 12 months, a whole year, and then it comes down to two days. I mean, it's like at the Olympics, isn't it? Where everything just, you know, you're training for four years and it comes down to one day. The first part of my legacy was being a sporting champion, but now in my second part of my legacy, which is equally important, I really want to do something where, where I contribute and I love to inspire my two kids on a similar path of, of doing good for society. And at the same time also this change in mobility is, uh, has such a positive impact. So this is a very decisive decade and I want to play my role. I want to play my part and, and get involved. Extraordinary circumstances call for extraordinary ideas and extreme commitment. And the organizers came up with a concept for the coronavirus crisis. Physical attendance was strictly limited. But over one million people, including a former German foreign minister, tuned in to Green Tech Online. We're almost the only event who's going to happen because of our theme. You know, people are so supportive of, of continuing to take care of the environment because we've noticed in Corona how fragile we are as a society. And so I think we've grown together and all our partners, you know, they, hey, please, come on, we need this, try and make it happen. And celebrities tuned in from around the world to help make it happen. Singer-songwriter Sting performed a rendition of his haunting hit Fragile, now referencing the vulnerability of humankind and the planet we inhabit. I'd like to extend my sincere thanks to Nico Rosberg for this excellent initiative. Robert Redford provided his own perspective on environmental degradation. The development went out of control in Los Angeles and became like a gold rush place. So suddenly I just felt like the, the city that I love was like a, a mat that had pulled out from under my feet. European Union President Ursula von der Leyen also used the platform. We need you to innovate, to liberate the creativity, to stimulate society. Rosberg personally recruited these like minds for the good cause behind the Green Tech Festival. It's always personal. It's always me writing, myself, because um, that's, the, that's the way it works. And I have another funny example. So Robert Redford, Robert Redford and he was like, so who the hell are you? 
<laughs> so I had to backstep a little bit. I had to explain again Formula One, and I drive fast in a circle. You know, I used to be the best, <laughs> and now I, I switch. I switch, and now I'm fighting uh, for our environment. Um, and then he was like, "Oh, I love it. Yes." He's in bed, my son! 2016 saw Nico Rosberg become Formula One world champion. In 2010, he had signed to the Mercedes team. For the first three years, racing alongside the legendary Michael Schumacher, before Lewis Hamilton joined the team. Over the next four years, he and his old friend from go-karting days would be teammates and rivals for the crown. It's quite a cool thing that I can say then that I've beat over at least the course of one season two seven-time world champions in the same car as me. That's quite cool. I mean, not everybody can say that at least. Those boyhood dreams of future glory were no coincidence, being the son of Keke Rosberg, who was world champion in 1982. And the Finnish driver would often take little Nico along to the races. My dad was very supportive in my whole career. My mom never saw a single race of mine because she was so scared. But my father supported me all along. Yeah, he was very smart because, you know, um, having a, a father who's done it all, who has the, all the experience already, it's sometimes difficult because, of course, he wants to help you so much, you know, because he can tell, he, he's done, learned it all before. But it can be a bit much sometimes. And so he was very smart that he really accepted to step back totally. And most of the time didn't come to the races anymore. And it really gave me some, a little bit more calm. And it allowed me to make my own mistakes and go my own way. And but it's so hard for parents. I know it, I see it with my little go girls to let go and to let them do their own mistakes. It's so hard. But that's, I think, our duty as parents is just to to accompany them into their life and not really, you know, not to, to be too uh, uh, protective. And his own new family was a major factor in Rosberg ending his career just days after becoming world champion in 2016. But he did stay in touch with the sport as a TV race commentator and through his investment in Formula E. the all-new championship featuring all-electric cars. Motorsport's purpose needs to be there for doing good because you have such an incredible reach as a sport. So let's use that reach to drive change, you know, to drive positive change. There's an opportunity there. Formula E cars buzz around the track at speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour with zero emissions. Some motorsports fans miss the spine-tingling sound of gasoline engines. And Rosberg's dad, Kike, is among them. Just another clash of generations? He said, uh, who the hell needs this electric car uh, nonsense? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then I invested in Extreme e and, uh, in Formula E, and he's like, what the hell are you doing? And you know what? Two years later, I was at home with my parents, and, um, and I come around the corner, and I went to the TV to go watch the Formula E race. Do you know who was sitting in the first row, really excited to see the race start? My father. Green Tech's inaugural event in 2019 was held together with a Formula E race at Berlin's old Tempelhof Airport. This year, a former power plant played host to the festival and its all-around message of a sustainable future. And this time, a number of companies were in town to present their environmentally friendly wares. Among them, Germany's main railway operator, for whom Rosberg has starred in a number of ads in recent years as brand ambassador. I am a passenger, and I ride, and I ride, I ride through the city backsides, I see the stars come out of the sky. I'm the ambassador of all of their sustainability initiatives. For example, to tell the story that all their long-distance trains are totally CO2 neutral. And yes, they put me next to Iggy Pop. 
in the commercial and I was there Iggy Pop naked and Deutsche Bahn you have to know is a very traditional German company owned by the government and here's naked I mean, almost naked here yeah, I mean top topless Iggy Pop sitting in the train and us laughing at each other that was like a first time ever for Deutsche Bahn to take such a, a risk okay man er hat wirklich glaubwürdig auch ein We've seen an amazing change in his attitude to mobility. It's great seeing him get so involved. For him, it's not about providing his face for some ad campaign. He really wants to contribute content-wise. As you can see behind us, he supports the companies involved. My company developed this whole chassis of this car and uh, we won the Deutsche Mobilitätspreis in 2019. So this is the mover, but I didn't recognize it in the first instance because when I drove it, it was always without cabin. So now this is the mover with the cabin. We developed the, um, the, the four corner modules and they, can, they have an engine, engine inside the hub and they can spin on its own axis. Nico Rosberg is also an investor in startups, like electric airborne taxi provider Volocopter. Whenever there are issues where we need his opinion, whether market-related or on specific products, we can ask him and his team. And of course, the platforms he has access to are a big help. Berlin has become a major startup hub and practically Nico Rosberg's second home. So, good morning. I'm here at Brandenburger Tor. I'm heavily invested in the mobility space. Um, and also here in Berlin, I have actually two startups, two uh, big, big potential startups where I'm invested since many years. So I'm very busy when I'm here. <clears throat> but I think Berlin is a lovely city, yes. Oh, no, I'm, I'm saying wrong. I was on the Spree the other day. I was doing the cleanup regatta. So everybody gets canoes, and then the winner is the one who brings the most uh, plastic back to shore from the, from the river here. And so we're out there like battling, trying to get the plastic, and our biggest catch was a whole shopping cart. So there's a shopping cart sunk in the, in the river, so we lifted that out, put it on the canoe and brought it back, and that was our biggest catch. With Berlin, now I have a big relationship because our headquarters are here for our festival in Berlin. For the last two years, he's been paying regular visits to the green tech offices in Berlin to consult with his partners. When Nico's here, we talk about everything from A to B. And he knows his stuff. We might well be at the start of a process that could change industry as we know it. And that's what drives him. There's so many decisions to me, it's infinite. You know, it's infinite. And then supporting with network, with this and that with ideas, um, endless. Rosberg is using that network to help the environment. And it's a mission for which he's been able to recruit politicians and business leaders too. Nico Rosberg organizing a trade fair for sustainable and CO2 neutral mobility shows that the climate crisis has become a mainstream issue. We need people who embrace this new technological advance and can be ambassadors. One Formula One driver can't do it on his own, but together they can. It's great what he's doing. It's so impressive to see what he's doing generally. He's using his fame for a good cause. A cause supported by leading scientists, even if they're not exactly Formula One aficionados. Um, to be honest, I have not heard of Nico Rosberg before this festival, uh, which means that he's only getting more fans for what he's doing now. Oh, really? <laughs> How cool is that? How cool is that? And that is something that I would applaud using one's fame uh, to promote sustainable way of working and living. If you, you build a, a great product, but if you don't know how to market it and how to reach the people with it, um, then you, know, you don't have any ch chance. We had to decline, I don't know how many thousands of people who were wanting to come, you know, and wanted to get tickets. We said, sorry, uh, we can only get you in virtually this time, but we promise next year uh, everybody can come again, hopefully, uh, and we can go big again and really build on, la on, on last year and on this year and just uh, really go through the roof with our event. And Green Tech is set to get bigger and bigger. 
with events already planned for 2021 in New York and Shanghai. An international festival will hopefully help to save the world.